Today we're going to talk about sound panels and I'm going to give you some details on these hanging beauties behind me. Whoa, whoa. Connection. That is what every recording artist desires with their listeners. To be able to create a soundtrack for somebody's life with their memories through their days. Now, as a vocalist, the best way of doing that is having a crisp, clear vocal performance. The question now is how to achieve those type of vocals. In my situation, I had to create an ISO booth, an isolated area where I can record my vocals without any extra noise in the background. Now, having a home based recording studio quite simply means you got to maximize the space that you will be using to create your music. But at the same time, you got to minimize the fingerprints and the impact that it will have on day to day life, your family, and your home. Now, my recording area is in my single car garage. The width is roughly about 12 feet. Now, on parallel walls there, I have industrial sized shelving units. Each of those shelving units come out about four feet. That leaves me with a very slim walking path in between those shelving units. Now, I was able to find a solution, which were the soundproof curtains. I put them in the front and in the back, which made it easy to walk through or even bungee cord to keep them out of the way. But I needed something in front of the shelving units that were a little bit more sturdy. Now, I have two foot by four foot sound panels remaining from a previous studio. Now, I needed these panels to be light, very efficient and I needed them to be portable or removable since these shelves are functional on a day-to-day -day basis with my other businesses. At my local home improvement store, I found these very thin pieces of plexiglass that matched my sound panels perfectly, two foot by four feet. Now, as you can see here, I put soundproofing on both sides because I wanted to avoid any sound coming off of the boxes or product, whatever was on the shelves behind it and coming back into my recordings. The next thing to deal with is how to hang these units. In my junk drawer, I found four matching ring hooks that worked perfectly for my situation. Now, a detail to notice here is that the tops of the rings overlap the plexiglass panels by at least a quarter inch. This allows the panels to sit flush in front of the shelving units and avoids any metal to plexiglass contact at all. You can also see that I use liquid nails to secure the sound panels to the plexiglass. You can also use Velcro, spray adhesive, or tape to accomplish the same results. Now on the back of the panels, please be very cautious not to over tighten the nut on the bolt. Now going back to my trusty junk drawer, I found these two inch diameter ring hooks that I can mount on the ceiling of my ISO booth to hang my panels from. And to hang the panels, I use basic carabiners, basic hooks, on both sides to make it easy to clip on and clip off. These two panels took me less than two hours to build and that included the time spent driving to and from the home improvement store. Make sure you're always resourceful, creative, and intentional in accomplishing the goals for your home studio. Now the proof is in the pudding as they say. There's no special microphones, equipment, preamps, anything being used for this video. The only item used is my smartphone took pictures, video, did my voiceover, and did post-production video editing on it. See if you can tell the difference between this ISO booth vocal and a non-ISO booth vocal. All right, there you go, everybody. Those are the sound panels of my ISO booth. If you have any questions, leave a comment below or send me a message, and I'll make sure to answer those questions.